Hi, this is Todd Flynn of Math. In this video, we're looking at the angle ruler. Probably one of the most underutilized tools in our math toolbox. Um, we're going to talk about the key features. We'll talk about how you can use the angle ruler to make angles and to measure angles. And we'll also do a little comparison of why I like it over the protractor. All that's coming up next on the Land of Math. All right, our first thing we're going to look at are parts and features of this angle ruler. So when you look at this, it's important to make sure we're looking at it correctly. Circles on the left, and then the actual words and letters need to be correct, so not upside down or backwards. The circle itself on the left here is important. It shows 360 degrees. Now mine goes to 180 and then goes back to zero, but that's going to be used a lot with our angles. Next, you're going to notice there's like two green lines. And these lines are important as far as like measuring and making angles go. The little dots here are also key because later when we're making um, angles, a lot of times we'll put a little dot using these different circles to help us make um, an angle. The little range here of 10 degrees, that's going to help us get a very accurate measurement. We're measuring angles. The grommet is nice as far as like putting over top of the vertex of an angle. And we also can measure with the angle ruler. So we can measure up to 12 inches, or we can measure up to 30 centimeters. So it's kind of a nice little extra feature. All right, in our next section here, we're going to look at measuring angles. And there's three basic methods we're going to look at. So the first one, kind of like lines on the rays. So we're going to make sure our two green lines are going to line up on the two lines of the angle. Our grommet is going to be right on top of the vertex, or that dot where the two lines meet. And we're just going to lay the green lines right on top and making sure the vertex um, is covered by the grommet. And when you move it away, you can see it looks like about 45 degrees. Now, we get to method two. What we're doing here is we're actually going to try to open up this angle ruler and that little opening right there. We're going to make the angle fit right into there. So I just keep moving it closer and I keep readjusting. And eventually what's going to happen is that angle is going to fit right in there. And you can see right here, it looks pretty good. And if I move the angle ruler away, you can see, boom, just like the last one, 45 degrees. Now this next one is one I use a lot when I'm teaching and I'm checking uh, students' work, is I just literally take the angle ruler and just lay it right on top. I don't open it up. I make sure the two green lines are on the first, um, like the bottom line, we'll call it. And I can just look and see where the line passes through and it's 45 degrees. So this is a real quick, easy one to use as well. One of the big advantages of using the angle ruler is how easy it is to measure two and three dimensional objects. So all you have to do, and this is kind of like method two, is you just take your geometric shape and you just conform the angle ruler to whatever this shape is and you can find that how many degrees it is. So for example, this is a 90 degree angle here. On this hexagon, again, we just kind of make the shape conform to it. You can see it's about 120. And on these last two on the trapezoid here, you can see this angle looks like it's around 60 degrees and the other angle here looks like around 120. So it's pretty easy. But the same thing works if you're using, say, three-dimensional objects. So on this one right here, we have a hexagonal prism. And let's say we want to find out how many degrees the slant height would be. So again, you just take your angle ruler, kind of fit it to that, and you can see it's about 75 degrees. And on this um, cylinder, not cylinder, um, cone, if we look at this cone, again, how many degrees is the angle right here? It looks like about 70 degrees. And like here's a rectangular prism, good old fashioned rectangular prism. And it should be 90 degrees and you can see it is. In this next section, we're going to talk about drawing angles. And there's two basic ways of doing it. So start off by drawing a line. Like I have a little ray here. You're going to take your grommet, put it right over top of the, the what's going to be the vertex. Put the bottom green line right on the line that we've just drawn. And then take the other green line and open it up so it passes through whatever angle you want. So this is like 60 degrees. In one of those holes, make a little dot. And then just connect what's going to be the vertex through the dot. And that's going to give us a 60 degree angle. Now, there's another way of doing this as well. The other option is, again, draw a ray. This time, open your angle ruler up to 60 degrees. And what that's going to do is create like a little opening right here that's 60 degrees. Just make it fit right in and you can draw it that way and that's the other option so you have two 60 degree angles so one more example of both of these you start with your line or array in this case it was like three inches 
take the grommet, it's going to go right over top of the vertex, the bottom green line right on the line we've drawn, find one of those holes and put a dot and then connect them. And so this one's 120 degrees. And if we want to do option number two for this, start with array. And again, this time, open up the angle ruler to 120 degrees and then just make your mark that way. Both of them are good and both of them work fine. All right, the last section, I want to talk a little bit about why I prefer the angle ruler over a protractor. So the first scenario, if you're dealing with angles that are very small, the protractor where the numbers are located, sometimes the line off your angle doesn't reach the number, so it's kind of hard to read. But if you're using an angle ruler, you could just lay your angle ruler right on top. You can put the two green lines right on top of the two lines of the angle, or you could just wedge in there. So it's easy to read, even if it's a small angle. The other scenario is if you're dealing with an angle that's greater than 180. So it's more than 180 degrees. With an angle ruler, you would just rotate it until the two green lines are right on top of the two lines of the angle. But if you're dealing with a protractor, it only goes up to 180. So you'd have to make a little mark where the 180 degrees is. You would have to then rotate the protractor, measure that distance, in this case it looks like 15, and add that number to the 180. So it's just a little extra work, makes it a little harder. The other thing I really like is that it's easier to find real life examples of people using angle rulers, whether it's uh, chiropractors or also like architects. We well, hope you found this video helpful. We'd love it if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, we'll see you on the land of math. Thank you.